Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 58. Lesson number 58 and we are on page number 268, 200, uh, 261 rather, and day 3058, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition day 58 on page 261 is the very last problem that you see on the page, problem number 7, we did the first 6 already, problem number 7, take a look at it under the algebra exercises, problem number 7, part A. We are given two simultaneous equations, very straightforward, very simple simultaneous equations and our job is to find the value of x and y. The first equation is x plus y is equal to 24. x plus y we are told equals 24. x minus y we are told is equal to 18. Let's simply add the two equations because we have a positive y and negative y. Let's add the two equations. They're going to, y's are going to drop out. x plus x is 2x. And since we are adding the two equations, we have to add here. We have 12. Carry 1, we get 42, which means x is equal to 21. Once we have the value of x, we can figure out the value of y. x plus y is equal to 24, which means y must be 3. That's all. As you can clearly see, 21 minus 3, 21 minus 3 is 18. Let's, let's look at number 2. x minus y we are told equals negative 5 and x plus 2y is equal to 3 we are told. Now here we have to do a little bit of a work because uh, the coefficients are different of x and y the coefficients are different so it's not as simple as this one. Somehow we have to get rid of one of the variables we can either multiply the first equation by 2 and making it 2y or multiply the second equation by 3 and making it 3x. Let's multiply the first equation by 2 so here is our equation 1 and here is our equation 2. You must label your work every time. So let's take the first equation, equation number 1, and we're going to multiply it by 2. If we multiply equation 1 by 2, we're going to get 6x minus 2y and 5 times neg negative 5 times 2 is going to give us negative 10. And now rewrite our equation 2. We're simply going to rewrite the equation to x plus 2y, we are told, equals 3. And now they have the same coefficient. We can simply add the two equations. And 2y's are going to drop out. 6x plus x is going to give us 7x. 7x is equal to negative 10 and a 3 is going to give us negative 7. Multiply both sides by 7 and we're going to get x equals to negative 1. Once we know the value of x, we can put the value of x in either the first equation or the second equation and figure out the value of y. Let's put it in this second equation. Equation 2 tells us that 2y, 2y must equal 3 minus x. 3 minus x. 3 minus x, which we, are, which we have found to be negative 1. 3 minus a negative 1 is going to give us 4. So 2y is equal to 4, which means y must be 2. And if we wanted to, we can verify the work. And why simply say if we wanted to, why not just do it? Let's do it. 3x minus y, 3, we are, we are claiming we are claiming x to be negative 1. We want to verify our claim. If we are claiming x to be negative 1, then 3 times x, 3 times negative 1, minus, minus y, y we are claiming to be 2, it better equal negative 5. 3 minus negative 1 is negative 3 and negative, negative 3 and negative 2 is indeed negative 5. Is indeed equals negative 5. Second equation also, x plus 2y, x we are claiming to be negative 1 plus 2y and y is 2. And as you can see, negative 1 and a positive 4 is going to give us positive 3 just like it says here. It, it confirms. Our work is indeed correct. It all checks out. 
let's look at part C. I'm just going to erase the whole thing. In part C we have fifteen x minus eighteen minus two y we are told equals minus three x plus y and I'm going to put the second equation that they give us instead of putting it right underneath it because we have to work on this equation to so simplify it we're going to do the work here so let's put the second equation next to it make it a make it a nice nice juxtaposition so the second equation is 10x plus 7y we are told plus 20 has to equal 4x plus 2 4x plus 2 I keep checking because I want to make sure that it, I, did, I did not end up copying something wrong because that would not be good. Let's bring all the known quantities to this side and all the unknown quantities to that side. We see 3x here. Let's bring it here by adding 3x to both sides. Let's add 3x to both sides. So that's an addition. That was a plus. We have a y here. Let's bring the y to the other side by subtracting y from both sides. And we have 18 here, let's bring 18 to that side by adding 18 to both sides. Well, now we can simplify it very easily. So we have a positive 18 and a negative 18. We have a positive 18 and a negative 18 right here. Negative 18 and a positive 18, that's going to drop out. We have a negative 3x and a positive 3x, that's going to drop out. That was the whole idea and a positive y and negative y is going to go away. So we end up with 15x plus 3x is going to give us 18x. A negative 2y and y is going to give us negative 3y. And that has to equal whatever it is that we have on the other side, which is 18. Now, as we are doing our work, we must always pay attention to the equations that we get at the end to make sure that there are no common factors. In this case there is a common factor. The common factor in this entire equation is 3. 18 is a multiple of 3, negative 3 is a multiple of 3, 18 is a multiple of 3. If we leave the equations the way it is, we end up, we'll end up doing a lot of extra unnecessary work. We'll cut down our work quite a lot. We're going to cut down our work substantially if we simplify this equation by dividing the entire equation by 3. Let's divide this entire equation by 3. In other words, let's divide this term by 3, that term by 3, this term by 3, divide the entire equation by 3, 18 divided by 3 is 6x, negative 3 divided by 3 is going to give us negative y, and this is going to give us 6. Let's call it, let's call it equation 3. Let's call this thing equation 3. Even though equation 3 is nothing but a derivation of equation 1. That was equation 1, this is equation 2, even though we did not put it down. This is what we're going to call equation 3. Similarly, we're going to do something here. We're going to have equation 4 and then we're going to work with equation 3 and 4. Do you understand? Instead of working it in this form. Let's bring the x, x to other, both sides. So subtract 4x from both sides. This is a positive 4x, negative 4x. Let's subtract 4x from both sides. If there is no y here. Let's bring 20 to the other side. There must be some sign here, either a positive or negative. I left it out, so I have to check the book. Second equation, problem number 7c. 7c. We have 10x plus 7y plus 20. So let's subtract 20 from both sides. Okay? Very good. What I'm going to do next is not... What I'm going to do next something is not something you need to worry about. It's just I prefer it that way. I always prefer to line up my digits. This is a unit digit. This is a 10 digit. I don't like the way it's sitting. I'm just going to put it here. It's not a big deal, I just prefer it that way. The digits have to line up. All the digits, you see like, you see right here for example, I did not put that 3 here. That 3 is underneath the unit digit. It looks better, do you understand? It looks nicer. That's all. So let's do it out. 10x minus 4x is 6x. 7y is simply going to come down. 20 and 20 is going to cancel out, that was the whole point. And this positive 4x this positive 4x and negative 4x is going to go away. We have an equal sign. A positive 2 and a negative, negative 20 is going to give us negative 18. 
and that's our equation 4. That's our equation 4. What do you notice? What we notice is that equation 3, we have 6x here, equation 4, we have 6x here. Why don't we simply subtract? Why can I, we can either subtract equation 3 from equation 4 or equation 4 from equation 3. If we, are, we, if we want to subtract equation 3 from equation 4, then we would have written equation 3 underneath equation 4. If you want to subtract equation 4 from equation 3, then we would put equation 4 under equation 3. Makes no difference. Either way, we're going to get it to 6x. Let's subtract equation 3 from equation 4. So we have 6x. This is equation 3 right here. 6x minus y equals positive 6. Now watch what happens. This is where you have to pay attention. We are going to subtract it. Since we are going to subtract, since we are going to subtract equation 3 from equation 4, when you're subtracting one equation from the other, the very first thing we need to do is to change the signs of all the coefficients before you do any work at all. Don't try to do one term at a time. Do the entire equation in one shot. As soon as you decide that you're going to subtract this equation from some other equation, change the coefficient, change the sign of each of the coefficients in that equation that you're about to subtract immediately. This one has a positive coefficient, positive 6. It's going to become negative 6 because we're going to subtract it. This, is, this has a coefficient of negative, negative is going to become positive. This has a coefficient of positive, it's going to become negative. Now we can see a positive 6 and a negative 6x, six, they can cancel each other out, which was the whole point. What happens next? We have a positive 7y, we have a positive 7y, and a positive y. We are no longer dealing with negative, it's positive. 7y and a y is going to give us 8y. Here we have a negative 18 and a negative 6, which is going to give us negative. See, we're dealing with negative. We're no longer dealing with positive. It's going to give us positive, negative 24. Let's divide both sides by 8. And y turns out to be negative 3. Once we have the value of the one other variable, we can find out the value of other variable very easily by substituting the value of y in any of the equations that we have. We have equation 1, equation, uh, equation 3, Equation 3 is simply the derivation of equation 1. So obviously we're going to work with equation 3 or equation 4. Because why work with this mumbo jumbo when we can work with simpler form, either equation 3 or equation 4. Let's put it in equation 3. So y equals negative 3. And equation 3 in that case implies that 6x, right here 6x, minus y, minus y, which we're saying is, this is where you have to pay attention, you see? It is 6x minus y. y is negative 3 equals equals 6 equals 6 so it becomes 6x plus 3 equals 6 let's subtract 3 from both sides and we're going to end up with 6x equals 3 which means x must be half 1 the last thing we need to do here is to make sure that our work is correct by verifying it and again in verification, we're not going to use the original equations, we're going to use equation 3 and 4 for verification because they are simpler version, which is the whole point. We simplify this long equation into this nice equation. We're going to verify in this one and we're going to verify in equation 4. Let's do it up here. So we are, again, we are using equation 3. Equation 3 tells us 6 times x, x we are claiming it to be half minus y, minus y, which is negative 3, and that better adds, add up to 6. If it doesn't, then we are in trouble. As you can see, half of 6 is 3, and negative 3 and a negative 3 is going to become positive 3, so it's simply 3 plus 3, which is indeed 6, which is supposed to be 6. Let's verify this equation 4. Equation 4 tells us, this is equation 4 right here, 6x, which we are claiming to be half, x we are claiming to be half, plus a 7y, 7 times y, which we're claiming to be negative 3, and this better add up to negative 18. And if it doesn't, we have a problem. Half of 6 is 3, and 7 times 3 is 21, it's going to be negative 21, and 3 minus the 21 is indeed negative 18. It checks out. It checks out. Our work is correct. That was the end of problem number 7. Let's turn the page. Let's go to problem number 8. Here on the next page, 
page number? 362. Problem number 8, let's see what we have on problem number 8. Maybe a word problem, maybe an algebra word problem, so we'll see. Oh, it's, it's inequalities. We are dealing with inequalities in problem number 8. The first one, part A says, negative 3x is greater than or equal to 7 plus x. 7 plus x. Is it correct? Yes. Let's bring the x to the side. There are no un, uh, there are no constant here. There are no known quantities here, which we would have had to bring to the other side, which we don't have to do. Let's bring the x to this side by subtracting x from both sides. x is going to drop out. And this negative 3x and, and, and negative x is going to give us negative 4x, which is greater than 7. Question is, what happens next? What happens next is that we need to get rid of this negative sign. And I'm going to do it in two steps. Instead of trying to, instead of trying to divide the entire equation by negative 4, I'm going to do it in two steps, which is what you should do also. Whenever you end up with dealing with negatives in the, in the, in the, in the in, in, in inequalities, take care of that separately. And the reason is this. For example, we know, we all know that 3 is greater than 2. Would you agree? But what what happens? If we were to multiply both sides of the equation, if we were to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1, if we were to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1, then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative 3 is no longer greater than negative 3 is no longer greater than negative 2. Negative 3 is indeed less than negative 2. So what do we learn out of it? What we learn out of it, this is, what we learn out of this exercise is that whenever we multiply or divide an inequality, one more time, whenever we multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, we must remember to reverse the direction of the inequality. We must remember to reverse the direction of the inequalities. Pointing this way, it must become that way. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1. I shouldn't have done it here. That was a stupid thing to do. I'm going to undo it. I'm going to do it in two steps. Because I don't want to change the direction yet. So we have a, we have a negative 4x here. We have a negative 4x here. And we have a 7 here. Let's multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1. And as soon as we do that, as soon as we do that, we must change the direction of the inequality. The direction is pointing this way, it will become that way. Otherwise, it will not be correct. Negative times negative is positive, so now we get positive 4x, we are told is less than 7. Divide both sides by 4, and it gives us x is less than 7 fourth. x is less than 7 fourth. How do we show it? How do we show the solution on a number line? Well, this is how it goes. It has to be less than 7 fourths. So here we go. Here is our 0. Put 7 fourths anywhere you like. 7 fourths. Which is, of course, more than 1. It's, it's less than 2. Because 8 fourths would be 2. But that's your 7 fourths. The second thing we have to understand, the second thing we have to pay attention to is that it says that x is less than, se less than 7 fourths. It does not say seven, less than or equal to. It doesn't have an equal to sign, which means it doesn't include the end point. It doesn't include the end point, so the end point has to be left open. Had it been an equal sign, we would have closed that end point. And anything less, x has to be less than 7 fourths. So this is 7 fourths. Anything less than that would do. Anything less than that would do all the way up to infinity. Anything less than that would do. This is how we show it. That's the solution. Should we move on to the next one? Should we move on to part B? The answer is no, we should not. We have not verified our work yet. How do we go about verifying answer? How do we go about verifying our answer when we are dealing with an inequality as opposed to an equation? An equation very straightforward to verify our work. We just, we just did it several times. How does one go about verifying one's work when one is dealing with an inequality? Well, by taking two points in either range, in this range and that range. So let's let's do that. For example. For example, if you were to extend this out, this is 7 fourth. Let's put down 8 fourth here. 8 fourth is equal to 2. And you can see it falls outside the solution. It falls outside the solution. We are claiming x has to be less than 7 fourth. 
That means if you were to put two in here, it should not work. It will not, it will, the, the inequality will not hold. And if it doesn't hold, then we are okay. Let's do it. Let's verify it. I need to, I, we need the room. Oh, we can verify it here if you like. So we are told negative three, negative three X is greater than seven. Watch what happens. If you were to put three here, two times negative three is negative six. And negative 3 is not, negative 6 is not greater than 7. Which is just as well because it should not work. It is outside the solution. It does, it shouldn't work. When on this side, we can use 0, which is a very simple one to use. Or we could have used 1. 1 falls in our solution. We could use either, we could use anything. And if you put 0, 0 is very easy to see. You can, if you put 0 here, then 0 of course is greater than 7. 0, 0 is not greater than 7. What the hell is going on? Did I make a mistake? x plus 7, subtract 7 from both sides, we get negative 4. Oh, I did make a mistake. This is all wrong. I, don't, I wonder how this one verified actually. There must be a reason why this one worked out. Here's a mistake that was made. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. I'm going to put it in a different color so you can see where the mistake was made. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. It is, and you divide by negative 4, solution is this. Solution, okay, I'll explain to you why it, it checked out in a second. So the solution is, x has to be less than negative 7 fourth. What is great, it's just, just as well that it did not work out. Because that's the whole point of verification. The whole bloody point of verification is to, is to do exactly what it says, which is to verify our work. When we put in 2, it worked out just fine. But when I tried 0, it wasn't working out. Because if we put in 0 here, it says 0 is greater than 7. 0, the way it's drawn here, is part of the solution. But it doesn't work out. 0 is not greater than 7. Which tells us that something went wrong. Which tells told me that something had gone wrong. What had gone wrong is that... I had forgotten this negative sign here. Now, the solution is this. X has to be less than negative 7 quarter. And since, since 2, since we put in 2, which would be outside the solution set, it did not work out. I'll show it to you here. This is the solution set. So this is wrong. X has to be less than negative 7 quarter. Not here, not here, but 7 quarter somewhere here. Let me erase this thing. I'm not going to redo the whole thing so you can see it actually. 7 quarter would be somewhere here. Negative 7 quarter would be somewhere here. And the solution set is up to here only. Which means 0 should not work out, 1 should not work out, 7 quarter should not work out. These are all outside. Yes. As you can see, when we put in 2, it did not work out. If you put in 1, it will still not work out. If you put in 1, 3 times negative 1, 3 times, rather 3 times 1, is negative 3 and negative 3 is not greater than 7. 0 would not work at all. If you put in 0 here, it says 0 is greater than 7, which is not. You see, because they are all outside the solutions, all of these three points. 0 is outside the solution set, so is 1, so is 7, 7 fourths, so is 8 fourths. Now let's put in something on this end. For example, negative 2 should work. Negative 2 should just work. Negative 2 is negative 8 quarter, which is on this side. We have Anything less than seven quarter, anything less than negative seven quarter, should work. Negative eight quarter should work. Negative two should work. Let's put it negative two here somewhere. Let's do it here. So it is negative three x. We are told is greater than seven. And watch what happens when we put in negative two x, negative x, or negative two rather, negative three. And then for x, let's put in negative two, and we'll see that it does work. Negative three and a negative two is six. Oh, this is getting to be ridiculous. I could actually, since the fact that you, the very fact that you're watching it still, that means that I decided not to, not to delete this video and redo it. I'm just going to continue here because I want to find out. It's okay if I make a fool of myself because that's the whole point. The whole point is to catch your mistake. If you make a mistake, making making mistake is one thing. Negative 2 should work. Oh, 
all blasted all this time all the verification that I had been doing was also wrong I am not paying attention at all let's start again let's start the verification again and this time I'm going to pay attention this is the equation negative 3x negative 3x we are told is greater than 7 plus x I have been leaving the x out so far every time let's start the verification very quickly I'm not going to rewrite everything 2 should not work if you put in 2 here we're going to get a negative 6 which is which tells me which tells us that negative 6 is greater than 9 which it is 9 2 does not work because you can see 2 does not work if you put in 1 1 should not work if you put in 1 here negative 3 times 1 it says it's greater than 7 plus 1 and negative 3 is not greater than 8 that does not work if you put in 0 that should not work if you put in 0 here you get 0 is greater than 7 plus 0 which does not work which it is not it does not work 1 does not work, 0 does not work, they should not work because they are outside the range, outside the solution set. If we put in negative 2, negative 2 should work. And now that we have the correct inequality, it should work. Let's do it here, negative 2. Boy, this takes a long, I took a long time. Negative 3 times negative, negative 3 times negative 2, which is what this is. And it has to be greater than 7 plus a negative 2. Because x, we are saying is negative 2. 7 plus a negative 2 is, is positive 5 and negative 3 times negative 2 is 6 and 6 is indeed greater than 5. You see it works out. I always remind you to pay attention and I myself did not pay attention which shows, which goes to prove how important it is, how crucial it is, how vital it is, how imperative it is for one to pay attention and actually pay attention and not just preach about the bloody thing. Oh boy, I'm ashamed. Let's do part B, shall we? Let's do part B. I can't believe it was such an ordeal. But you must verify your work. Don't just leave it there because if I had I not verified, I would have I would have gotten a wrong answer. And as and, and, and if you end up this is this last part that I'm about to preach is very important. There are, there, are, there are five answer choices that they give you. One of them is the right answer. You have to ask yourself, what, are, what, is, what is the purpose of the other four answers? Where do they come from? Do they fall from the sky? The other four wrong answers are not falling from the sky. They are not just there, put, put there randomly. They are the four most common mistakes people make. Four most common mistakes. And if it turns out that the mistake that I made was one of the very common mistakes, one of the four most common mistakes, then my answer, even though it's wrong, would agree with one of the answer choices. And I would never know that I made a mistake, which is why you must verify. 25x, we are told. And of course, you, I understand that time is, of, of course, is, is a matter of concern. In the real exam, the clock is ticking. So it's the call that you have to make. It's the judgment call you have to make, whether or not you want to invest that extra time to buy the insurance, because that's what it is. It's insurance that you're buying to make sure that your work is correct. And like, just like any other insurance, you must pay the premium. The premium is the time that you can spend verifying it. Whether or not you want to buy that insurance is up to you. It's your call. I always do. Let's subtract 16 from both sides. This is a positive 10. Let's bring x to this side by adding x to both sides. And let's see what we get. Shall we? And hopefully this time it will not take forever. We have a positive 16 and a negative 16. They're going to kill each other. We have a negative x and a positive x, they're going to kill each other. 25x and an x is going to give us 26x and has greater than or equal to, we are told, 10 minus 16, which is going to give us negative 6. Which is going to give us negative 6. Another strange answer we are getting. Keep your fingers crossed, okay? Let's divide both sides by 26. If we divide both sides by 26, and since we are dividing by positive 26, the direction does not change. So we end up with negative 6 over 26. And since it's 6 over 26, let's reduce it, which is going to be the same as negative 3 over 13. So what we are claiming this time is that x has to be, let's put it at the bottom here, x has to be greater than or equal to negative, let's not put it at the bottom, greater than or equal to negative 313. That is our claim. That is our claim. Let's, let's take a look at it. Let's first show the solution on the number line before we worry about uh, verification. So again, here is our number line. Put a zero somewhere. 
greater than negative 313, so put it 313 anywhere you like, this is negative 313 right here, negative 313, let's just call it negative 313, and this time, this time, we are dealing with greater than, greater than, or equal to, you see it has equal to sign as well, which means you must include this point, it has, it's going to be a solid point, and as long as anything, including this point, and anything greater than that, it should work, which means if we were to put in 0 for x, it should work. 0 is part of our solution. Let's see if it works. And this time I have to pay attention. So we have 25x plus 16, and that has to be greater than or equal to 10 minus x. That's what we're dealing with, aren't we? If we put in 0 here for x, if you put 0 for x, what it says is that 16 is greater than or equal to 10, which it is. As you can see, 0 works. We could have put 1 and it would have worked. 1 would also work. 1 would also work. Let's put it here just to see it. If you put in 1 for x, if you put 1 for x, we'll end up at 25 plus 16, which is 41. And this 41 greater than or equal to 10 minus 1? The answer, of course, here. Yeah. answer, of course, is yes, it is. 41 is indeed greater than or equal to 9. On the other hand, if we had put in negative 1, negative 1, would be negative 13 over 13. Negative 13 over 13, which is less than negative 3 over 13, it should not work. It should not work. Negative 1 should not work. We can do it right here. Negative 1 would not work. 25 times negative 1 plus 16, which is negative 5 and a 6 positive 16. Negative, 5, negative 25 and a positive 16 is going to give us negative 9. And here, 10 minus a negative 1, which is gives us 11. Negative 9 and 11, as you can see, negative 9 is indeed not, negative 9 is indeed not greater than or equal to 11. It doesn't work. It falls outside the solution. And that's how you tell that you're doing it all right. Just pick some easy, easy, easy number. Don't don't deal with the fraction. If they give you negative three thirteen, don't try to put negative four thirteen. It will just create more work. Just put in whole number, negative one, zero, one, anything, and and try out one point outside the range. What put in one point within the solution set and one point outside the solution set, and if they both check out, then you're fine. Do you understand? Let's put in. Let's do. Let's do the last part C. The soup part C. Part C says 16, 16 plus x. 16 plus x, we are told, is greater than 8x minus 12. Notice that this time we just have a greater than sign, we do not have greater than or equal to. So we are not going to include the end point. That will be an open point. Let's bring 8x to this side so by subtracting 8x from both sides. And let's bring 16 to that side by subtracting 16 from both sides. So I need to bring this 16. Let's put. Okay. So, so we have a positive 16. We have a positive 16 and a negative 16, they're going to kill each other. We have a positive 8x and a negative 8x, they're going to kill each other. We have positive positive 1x and a negative 8x is going to give us negative 7x is greater than negative 12 and a negative 16 is going to give us 8, negative 28. And now, we need to get rid of this negative sign before we worry about 7 part. Do you understand? Let's multiply both sides. We have negative 7x is greater than negative 28. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1, both sides of the equation by negative 1. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you do that, remember to change the direction of the inequality. Remember to change the direction of the inequality. Greater than should become less than. Change the direction. And now we will worry about the other stuff. So negative times negative is positive, so 7x has to be less than negative 28 and negative 1 is going to be positive 28, and now worry about 7. As I said, don't try to divide the entire inequality by negative 7 in one shot, 
I just don't do it. I take care of the negative separately. It just gives me the peace of mind that I haven't forgotten to change the direction of the inequality. Do you understand? So we get x is less than 4. x is less than 4. Let's put it in the number line here. Less than 4, not, not less than or equal to it. Do you understand? So here's our 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be an open, open, open circle right here. It's an open, open one. And anything less than that, anything, anything less than four would do. Anything less than four would do. Let's put a couple of points to show that our work is correct. Zero should work. Zero should work. But if you put in five, if you put in five, five should not work. Let's do both of them. If you put in zero here, we have 16, 16 plus x is greater than 8x plus 12. If we put in 0, if we put in 0 for x, we get 16 is greater than 12, which it is. Because we're putting in 0. 0 works. 5 would not work. 5 would not work. 5 should not work, I should say. And if it does work, then something has gone wrong. 16 plus 5 and 8 times 5 plus 12 8 fives are 40, 40 plus 12 is 52, 52 versus uh, 21, and you can see 21 is not greater than 52. It cannot be, it doesn't, it shouldn't work, it doesn't work, it shouldn't work and it doesn't work. Do you understand? That was part C, and that was the end of question number 8. Beginning with question number 9, we are dealing with word problems. Let's do them separately. So tomorrow when we come in the next video, hopefully we'll knock out at least three or four more questions. Do you understand? We'll try to do at least three or four next questions in the next video. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.